Hello, in this presentation we're going to be talking about what will be included in the adjusting entries and reversing entries section of the course. The adjusting entries are going to be items that will be input as a normal process in the system as of the end of the time period, either the end of the month or the end of the year. There are often going to be things that we'll be needing help with with an outside CPA firm to make those adjustments. However, it's a good idea to know what those adjustments are in order to input them ourselves or to have an idea of what an outside CPA firm might be doing periodically to make our adjustments as of the end of the year or the end of the month. This is a comprehensive problem, so if you've been working the problem up to this point, then you can just continue from this point going forward if you'd like to jump to this point. Or if there's any problems and you would like to make sure we're in the same point in time in terms of the amount of data and the correctness of the data, you can use the backup files in order to restore to a particular section in the course and then work from there uh, to make sure we're all on the same page. So use those backup files as needed going forward. We will be covering the loan payable adjusting entry, making the loan payable correct as of the end of the time period, the end of the month or the end of the year. We'll have another loan payable adjusting entry for the two loans that we'll be looking at. We'll be using an amortization table in order to make that adjustment. We have accrued interest adjusting entry, so we're going to have the interest that will accrue and we'll need an adjusting entry in order to uh, record that. We have an invoice adjusting entry, so this is going to be an invoice that was recorded in the following month when the work was actually done in the prior month. And we'll talk about that adjusting entry. This is probably the most complex and the most uh, comprehensive in terms of the number of accounts that we'll have to enter. If you can understand this adjusting entry, it really helps to understand what the invoice is actually doing when we do enter an invoice. We'll then have a reversing entry for accrued interest. Reversing entries are going to be something that we could use. We don't have to use, but they are useful within a system because they allow us to make a reversing entry as of the first day after the month is closed, meaning we make our financial statements correct as of the financial statement date, and then we reverse it right after that. And by doing that, we can tell the accounting department, hey, you just do what you normally do, and uh, we'll just keep going forward, and you don't have to deal with our adjustment in there. And by the time that they make the normal transactions, then everything will work out given these reversing entries. Otherwise, the accounting department would have to uh, take into account our adjusting entries to record things properly going forward. So reversing entries are a useful tool we'll take a look at. Reversing entries for accounts receivable, same concept. We will reverse our adjusting entry as of the first day of the next month. Then we have the prepaid insurance adjusting entry. It's going to be a standard type of adjusting entry to record the amount of the insurance that has been consumed over the time period. We have the depreciation adjusting entry, which will record the deterioration of the equipment or the allocation of the cost, in other words, to the time period that it was used. And then we have the unearned revenue adjusting entry, which will be a little bit different than maybe in theory, because we're going to QuickBooks records the prepayments in a accounts receivable account as a negative receivable. And what we will do in the adjusting process is take that never negative receivable out and put that negative receivable into a positive or a liability account called unearned revenue, that being the proper reporting for accrual basis. The way QuickBooks does it, however, is really useful for QuickBooks because it allows us to match up the invoice and the payment. We'll then reverse that unearned revenue adjusting entry, putting that negative amount back into the receivable as of uh, the first day of the next month, and that way we can use QuickBooks benefits of having that negative receivable, uh, that benefit being the ability to match up the deposit with a later invoice. Then we have a journal report for financial statements. We'll look at the journal as a guide to see what adjusting entries have been input. And we'll look at this. This is going to be a great report if we want to see, if you want to see what has been done, if you have an outside CPA firm that puts adjusting entries into the system Doing a journal report gives us a good context in terms of what has been done, and that'll give us an idea of what has been done. If there's any problems, we can use that journal report to make any adjustments. And then we'll take a look, of course, at the balance sheet and income statement. 